Hey guys, PFM here, coming at you hot with a new video, and today we're going to be talking about how Pokemon cards are printed. So when I type into Google, how are Pokemon cards printed, uh, the information really isn't out there, at least not in an easy digestible format. So I've spent like enough time researching and looking into exactly all the steps uh, that happen during the printing process. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert, but I feel like I put in enough time and research to, to have a, a good understanding of how it works. Uh, more, more specifically, like the websites that I kind of went to were uh, a lot of Magic the Gathering websites where misprint collectors kind of explain the printing process. Um, and since the older Pokemon cards are printed by Wizards of the Coast and also Magic cards are printed by WotC, um, you know, the information is transferable between the two. So let's just jump right into it. So as you probably know, cards are printed on sheets like this. Um, but in this case, we're going to be focusing on a single card on this sheet and going through kind of all the steps that it takes to, to go from just a blank cardstock to the final printed version of the card. And so despite what a lot of people might think, the hollow on the card is actually uh, just on the, the cardstock. It's not printed on as a layer. It's already on the cardstock when it arrives to the printing facility. Uh, so we start with a hollow cardstock sheet. And then the first thing that they do, um, Pokemon cards are printed using an offset printer. So all the, the different colors and everything are printed on as separate layers. And the first thing they print on for a hollow card, uh, this doesn't really happen with a non-hollow card, but for a hollow card is they print an opaque white layer. And you can probably already see where this is going. Uh, but yeah, so the first thing is the opaque white layer, which is very important um, to understand how a lot of hollow uh, misprints and errors happen. So we have our opaque white layer. Then the standard offset printing process, what they do is they add uh, three colors and black uh, as different layers that combine together to, to form all the colors that you see. So it's called CMYK printing and it uses cyan, uh, magenta, yellow, and black, just probably like your printer at home. And it'll add these colors separately. And separately, they, uh, they, I mean, it's only a single color, but together they form all the colors that you see on the card. And then again, black. And now that we've added these four color layers, uh, we're kind of seeing the card in its a truer form, right? And so it's kind of neat to see how you know just three simple colors sum together in the right way to form all the colors that we see. And uh, so if you look at this, one thing you might notice is that the blacks aren't really that black. Um, and so after they do the CMYK color layers, I should mention exactly how it looks. So if you were to zoom into the CMYK uh, color layers, you'll see that they actually form they're actually printed on as dots, very tiny dots. And then these dots, uh, because they're so small, your eye sees them as a solid color. But when you zoom in, you can see they're actually the four separate layers. Uh, so that's the CMYK. And then to uh, kind of sharpen it and to darken the blacks, they add a solid black layer. So solid meaning it's not using uh, a rosette pattern like this. It's, it's uh, thick printed uh, black. And so they use this to darken it and also sharpen the text. And then finally, uh, I think they add a, uh, also a solid red layer for the HP. And then finally, there's a border as a solid yellow layer uh, on the very top. And so all these layers now sum together to form the card as, as you recognize it in its iconic form. And I know that I'm using Legendary Collection here, and there's a uh, Cosmos hollow poil pattern, but let's let's not get too detailed here, right? And so if we were to just kind of strip these layers back again, um, we start with the hollow cardstock, we add the opaque layer, and as I should mention, once we add the color layers, the reason we have the opaque layer is so that the hollow shows through where it's supposed to and it doesn't show through where it's not. Um, so if we were to take it away, the whole card would be hollow. But with that layer, it makes it so that uh, the right spots of the card are, are showing as hollow. Then we add the solid black layer. 
uh, solid yellow layer, and we're done. So it's pretty simple, uh, but I feel like understanding this simple process can be powerful because it'll help you understand how misprints or errors can happen during this process, right? So let's talk about some of those. Uh, right here, we see kind of like an iconic misprint. It's the evolution box error Zapdos, which I believe is on all first edition versions of this card, probably all unlimited, but I'm not sure. Um, but what we can see is that the card is hollow over here, and then in the place where there should be an evolution box, or there would be an evolution box, it's uh, opaque and non-hollow. And then here on the No Rarity Raichu, we actually see kind of the reverse effect, where we have uh, the hollow showing through on the hollow box where it should not. And now that we understand the printing process, we can easily explain how something like this would happen. If we were to go back to the white opaque layer, we were to carefully cut out that corner of the white opaque layer, then when we print the color on top, we'll actually have the hollow showing through where it should not. And that's exactly what we see on the No Rarity Raichu. And for the Zapdos, Zapdos doesn't evolve. So we actually have the reverse problem where, they, uh, where they've added on the white opaque spot right there when they shouldn't have, and then it shows up as opaque, right? Pretty simple. Another kind of hollow error that you may or may not have seen, this one's a lot more rare, uh, is this hugely offset hollow, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but it's very evidently clear what's what's happening here. Um, and so to, to get this error to happen, again, we're going to that opaque white layer. If we were to grab that opaque white layer and then offset it from all the other layers, what you begin to notice is that it appears that the hollow is like shifting exactly the same way that it happens on these cards. Um, and the top is appearing as hollow here, which is only because it doesn't show hollow on, on these example cards. Right, there's no hollow on the top because on the sheet there's actually an opaque region right above each card right so in our demonstration it's a little off but but you get the idea so you know you can shift it this way you can shift it this way so again that's because the the how the opaque white layer is printed with respect to all the other layers okay Jumping into this one, the Neo Revelation, some people call it like a double hollow error. Some people say that they added an extra layer of hollow or some nonsense like that. Um, and like, to be honest, I don't really know exactly why this happens. Because if you look at some of these cards, they do appear to almost be more holographic. Um, but in order to have an effect like this, um, again, we're going back to that white layer. I should specifically mention what's happening here if you're not familiar with it. But so if you look at the Ho-Oh's wings, you'll notice that the hollow on some versions of the card, the hollow shows through on the wings and they don't here. And on the mischievous, the hollow shows through on the eyes sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. And to make this happen, so if we want to take our Charizard and we want to make the wings holographic, then all we have to do is chop off these wings from the white hollow layer sorry, white opaque layer, and now the wings are holographic. So just like the eyes on the mischievous, it means that there's no white opaque layer there where there would otherwise be one. Um, so I don't know if this, this is caused by an error in the design process or what, but um, it's definitely happening on the, the level of the white opaque layer. All right. You want a, a, a sparkly head Charizard? You just erase that opaque white layer right there. Easy. Uh, so that's those ones. Next up, we have the reason I'm making this video. The inspiration is the, the thread on E4 today, where somebody has shown a, a Charizard that um, they called it the ripped wing Charizard, where uh, the hollow is showing through on the wing, as you see here. You can see like the star hollow pattern here. And a lot of people immediately jump to the conclusion that it could be like due to acetone removal or uh, a scratch or something. Uh, but the thing that caught me my attention is the fact that you can still see the color on the wing, right? So if you were to if you were to take acetone and apply it to the card, you would remove um, 
black layer, you would remove all the color layers. You would remove uh, the white opaque layer, and then you'd be left with, whoops, which one am I missing? You'd be left with the hollow, the, the silvery hollow underneath at the bottom, right? With acetone, you would remove all those layers, including a scratch, the same thing. You'd remove the color layers and you remove the opaque white layer. But in this case, since we see the, the, the blue showing, showing through on the wings, in order for that to happen, you'd have to somehow remove the opaque white layer here without removing the color layers. And to do that, I'm, I'm, you know, maybe there's some malicious way of doing it, but in my opinion, it would be, it's more reasonable, reasonable to believe that it's just the factory kind of uh, error or misprint or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I, I would consider this to be kind of like a true error, a real error, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's kind of the power of knowing how cards are printed, is you get you understand these tiny details that will really tell you whether or not uh, somebody is trying to pass something off, off as, as something that is actually not. Um, but yeah, so I would say this is real. Whether or not you want to value it as a collector, that's totally another question. And we're not going to cover that here. Uh, but yeah, so that was the inspiration for this video. Next up, we're going to look at this uh, error that I've only seen on Rocket cards, but it could happen technically on any card, I guess, uh, where you have like a lighter version of these holographic cards. If you notice on the Dragonite, the face, there's like a shadow is a lot darker here than here. You can see the text is a lot uh, heavier here than here. Um, and it's pretty easy to explain. As I, as you remember, there's a, a black layer, a solid black layer that gets added, and a, 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 a rosette black layer. So like there's this one, the rosette pattern, and then a solid one. And again, the solid one is there to sharpen the text um, and to make the blacks blacker. And so essentially the difference between this card and this card is that it's the, that solid black layer is just not there. It's not being printed on or is being printed on very lightly. And that's why it, it appears lighter and also the text isn't as heavy. Um, so let's add that back. Okay, next error, we're looking to look at this one. So this is one Gary posted on E4, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago now. And he was asking how something like this can happen. And these fossil cards, you, you can notice two things about them. They're non-hollow, but uh, you notice that there's white showing through right here. And also the the black on the card kind of looks blurry up here, right? There's like a the outline of the aerodactyl is blurry. And so it's actually not hard to explain this one. If you were to take all the, the CMYK color layers and then slightly offset it relative to all the other layers, actually first before we do that, <laughs> let's make this card non-hollow so it matches. So yeah, if you were to take these color layers and then slightly offset all the color layers uh, with respect to every other layer, then you see two things. You see the white from the base of the cardstock, it now shows through. And you also see, because we have the solid black layer and then the CMYK black layer, um, those two are now offset from each other, which gives it that blurry effect. You can see on the text right there. And it's the exact same effect that we see here. Um, yeah. And so, okay. Uh, last one is this kind of very special Hitman Lee. This is the real cigar error Hitman Lee, where essentially what happened is in the printing facility, there, the the facility probably was printing something for a cigar company, and then some debris from that printing process ended up on uh, a Pokemon uh, cardstock sheet that ended up going through the printer, and so. To achieve this, let's make this card hollow again. Um, if we were to throw down this uh, <laughs> the cigar branding onto the card before it went to the printer, you'd get something like this, right? And so essentially what's happening is that um, you, the sheet goes in like this with the, uh, the debris on it, and then everything gets printed on top. So the white layer is not going to show the, through the, well, it looks like this. The white layer uh, gets put on top, and then all the color layers get added on top. And since that um, cigar error 
the cigar wrapper or whatever is obscuring or uh, is opaque. It's actually making the card non-hollow in this region. And then all the color layers are being added right on top of the, the cigar branding. So it blends in. And so when we compare that to the original, we see the exact same thing where uh, on the piece of debris, uh, it's actually non-hollow and all the colors are put directly on the, the cigar debris. And yeah, so, I mean, very easy to understand process, uh, but very powerful when trying to understand how error cards occur and being able to distinguish between, you know, a real error and something that is probably not real. Uh, so I hope you learned something today. I hope your time wasn't wasted. I hope you can share this video so that other people can understand. Um, yeah, but thanks for listening and have a great day.